Y'all be thinking y'all the only option. Baby, I can go date an Indian, a Hispanic, mm -hmm. a white man. Mm -hmm. Y'all not the only mm -hmm. options out here who think y'all doing well you know for yourself, and that? that's the problem. You know what's the problem? Y'all done put yourselves on a pedestal you know when it comes to black women, that's and y'all need to bring it on down that's true. because have we have we have gotten to start dating outside our race. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's true. That's true. And finding a white man. You're not. You're not. You know. Serious. You know. You know why y'all do that? Y'all do that and go and, and go make it look pretty, right? And we having a time of our you, lives. You, you is. You is. You is. But the moment all that glamour run out, that feel ain't there. That culture ain't there. That hug ain't there. That hawking figure of a black man ain't there. So you know what y'all do? Oh, y'all stay with this. With this good. He may be a good man. But he ain't giving you that feel. Again. My family don't look at him and say, he don't look right in pictures with me. <laughs> I need to leave. And that's what y'all do. If I'm going to pay half them bills, you being submissive to me too. I don't give a fuck. So when I say shut up, shut up. All right, today we're going to talk about how we can find out and how much we can find out and what it takes to get there. Yeah, so I cut that phone off. I'm not bringing nothing to the table, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you want a woman to bring something to the table, go to IHOP, go to the restaurant where you can tip her, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Because <laughs> if I bring something to the table, you're going to be mad because it's going to be another man. I'm going to do what the I want to do. Who going to not ask me to bring something to the table? He going to take care of the bill, them kids. I'm going to have me a man, boo boo. A man who wants to be with me and my baby. And everybody else. And you, if you look broke. Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And pretty much this video. It's not intended, you know, to um, bad, bad talk all, you know, sisters that may be in the truth or women in general. But if it applies to you, then it applies to you. All right. Now, the reason why our women have a corrupted mindset to where they don't respect the men of their nation, they're the biggest whores on the planet Earth from America to South America to all around the world. Is because this was a divine curse that the heavenly father, Yahweh, put upon our people, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15, when you get to about in the 50th um, verses of Deuteronomy 28, the Lord put a curse upon our people that our woman will have an evil eye towards us. All right. Now, at the forefront, the main one that has an evil eye is the so-called black woman, all right, so-called West Indian woman, and so-called Haitian woman. But you so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians, you're not off the hook, too. Because when you watch these different YouTube videos of South America and all around the world, they're being whores, too. They're fitting this narrative and this curse, too. Because they're Israelites, all right? You see the so-called um, Latin woman with the so-called white man in the other nations? Yeah, go, go on YouTube. You know, look at them Colombian travel videos. You know, look at Brazil. Look at different parts of the world and see what's going on with our people, all right? So ultimately, our women have been corrupted by the so-called white man, beginning with the Rockefellers, all right? Now, the Rockefellers, they funded women's liberation, you know, a.k.a. Um, the feminist movement in order to tax women. So women, they have adopted this ideology to pretty much hate men and surpass men, which links up with the scriptures in Jeremiah 31 and 22. So before I get into my lesson, I want to read some of these comments from Cora.com. So let's get straight into it. So it says women used to be proud of their femininity. It says they were happy to look after their husband and children. These days, women have so much garbage propaganda, which propaganda is lies or agendas that the Edomites, all right, portray on the media or through the music. They may use celebrities. They may use music 
They use different sellouts in order to promote an idea or an agenda in order to control the masses of people. So that's what they did with women in general concerning women's liberation and feminism, right? It says so much garbage propaganda getting pumped into their heads. They think it's important to compete against men. They think it's more important to serve their bosses over their husbands, which goes against the scriptures. Genesis 3, 16. A woman's desire is supposed to be unto her husband. All right. So it says they have no shame on how they dress and behave in public. Exactly. You know, you can't even tell if a woman is single or not based off of how she dresses. And these women are known to lie and be adulteresses. All right. It says lots of women have become disconnected with their nature. Exactly. It says depression is at its all time high. And that's not just for women. That's for men, too, because men are sexually frustrated. All right. It says housewives are way happier than working women. Exactly. Here's another comment by James Jones, Cora.com. It says, yes, feminism has without a doubt caused more harm than good. What most young people don't understand is that there have been different ways of feminism. The first two nobody disagreed with because they were for women's rights, which you now have. The third wave of feminism has gone away from that and turned into misandry, which misandry is what? Sex, sexism towards men combined with brainwashing women to believe they are victims of oppression, especially male in order to keep up with the woke identity politics. Part of this has been devaluing women's contribution as mothers. Another has been insisting that women should work the same as men, the result of which is often unhappy career men. It says the result of which is often unhappy career-driven women who realize too late in life they wanted a family too. But that was the choice they gave up to compete doing 80 hours of 80 hour weeks for a job. Yeah, because their careers and their job replace the husbands along with getting government benefits throughout the years. Right. Because you can only qualify to get these government benefits if the man wasn't in the house because a man is supposed to be a provider. All right. He's supposed to work. And, you know, pay for everything. And the woman, she's supposed to serve her man at home. She's not supposed to have liberty to go out, you know, dressing like a whore. Or I'm going to go um, clubbing with my girlfriends. This girl's night out. I'm going to go on vacation. I got guy friends. This type of shit is not supposed to happen. All right. But you could blame the Edomites. Going back to Sirach 12 um, 17. If adversity comes upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. You got to blame the nation that's a rulership that's promoting these agendas that tell women it's OK to be like that. All right. So it says men don't give that up because biology allows us to reproduce at pretty much any age. Exactly. So it's beneficial for a man to have more than one woman because the man carries the seed, which every single person on this planet Earth comes from a man's seed. All right. Namely, Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So every living soul on the planet Earth comes from a man. All right. So if a woman has multiple partners, she can only get pregnant one time by one man. So what purpose does it serve for a woman to be a whore and sleep around with multiple men when she can only get pregnant by one man? Meanwhile, a man, he can impregnate multiple women which is beneficial for the earth. Let's keep going. It says feminism is rooted in an essential hatred of the feminine or at the very least a misunderstanding of the feminine. It often tries get women to embrace both masculine virtues and vices. Men tend to be physically stronger. Let's have women play rough sports, right? The so-called equality agenda, right? It says men tend to be more competitive and overly aggressive. Let's have women do the same and put them in boardrooms. Men are sleeping around. Let's give women the pill and have them sleep around too. It says, except that sleeping around makes no one happy and it seems to produce even more misery 
in women than it does men. All right. So I just want to share that. Those are some key points on how feminism um, deals with uh, modern day life. You know how it corrupted modern day life and dating and stuff of that nature, relationships. All right. Now let's get into the scriptures. Luke um, 17 and 32. It says, remember Lot's wife. Now, over the past couple of days, months, past couple of year or two, a lot of brothers that's in the truth been catching hell with the women that we used to be with. Or maybe you might be a brother that is with a woman that is starting to give you hell after a certain amount of years. When you first came into this truth, you know, your woman, she was um, obedient. She was submissive. You know, she was your quote unquote ride the die chick. But now, as the years have progressed, it seems like these women are losing respect for us. All right. Because when you read in the scriptures, you know, Job's wife cursed the most high when Job was dealing with them trials and tribulations, when he was dealing with them afflictions. So what you need to understand is the most high through Satan will use the woman and try and sift you out of the truth and come up against you in this walk. All right. So if your woman don't listen, just you got to cast her off. So now that's going to this word. Remember. Right. Because it's saying remember Lot's wife, which Lot's wife was commanded not to look back by the two angels because they was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and the five neighboring cities. You know, going to show you that women don't listen even from the beginning of time. So this woman, she ended up looking back. And to this day, she is still a pillar of salt. So we got to remember these things because a lot of the women we dealing with or that we come across, they love this present world. They love their um, career. They love this system that puts them on a pedestal above men. They love it. They don't really want this place to be destroyed according to prophecy. Right. So here's the word. To remember. Strong's G 3421. My name I knew it says to be mindful. It says to be mindful of, to remember, to call to mind. Going back to Romans 15 and 4. The things written aforetime is written for our learning. So we see the hell that our forefathers caught being in relationships with the Israelite woman or just woman in general. And now we have to apply that to today. It says to think of and feel for a person or thing. To hold in memory Keep in mind, keep in mind that the woman you might be with, she may even be a baby mother. All right. This woman could turn against you. And like I said, this video is not intended for you to have an evil eye towards your, your wife. If your wife or wives is treating you good, you know, you fulfill the law and you, you treat them good as long as they doing their duties as a wife. All right. So let's read that again. It says to hold in memory. Keep in mind. So keep in mind, hey, man, your, your wife, she could come up against you at the very last moment. She can look back. You know, she could take the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant. Or even before that, she could just walk out of your life. You know, and I know because I've recently been through that. So it says to hold the memory, keep in mind to make mention of. So you got to make mention of Lot's wife because at the very last moment. She looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And the same thing is going to apply to these so-called Israelite sisters in the truth. All right. And just these unbelieving women in general. This is what's going to happen to them. They're going to be destroyed by fire and brimstone, thermonuclear destruction. Why? Because they don't listen. These women, they got an easy job. Just be submissive. Just listen. Try to the best of your abilities to be a pillar of rest. What's so hard about that? So these women are rebellious, right? Now let's go here. This is Isaiah chapter 32. And let's go to verse 9. It says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. And how do you hear the Lord's speech? Through his prophets, Luke 1 and 70. The Lord always had prophets throughout all our generations. All our captivities we was in up until this day, the Lord had prophets. All right. So now what are the prophets telling you? We're telling you to repent. Stop thinking like these modern women. All right. Stop being a feminist. Stop having 
feminist ideology. Stop hating men. You're, you're programmed and deceived by the media, the music, maybe your, your mother, your grandmother, all right, to, to hate men. Let's read it again. Isaiah 32 and 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. So what makes these women at ease? The career they have. The benefits that the so-called white men, the Edomites, give them in this society above the men. So now that these women are quote-unquote successful, which then turns them masculine, they don't have no respect for their men. You would think because these women have their careers that they understand how society is against men. Mainly the Israelite man, the so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American Indian man, you would think that she would try to uphold and uplift her man, all right? But these women don't do that. As soon as you start catching hell, as soon as you go through a position or positions of difficulty, these women start to doubt you and they walk out of your life, all right? So a lot of these so-called Israelite sisters and a lot of these women that brothers is with and just in general... They're going to reveal themselves for being worthless, all right? And they're going to be destroyed. It says, hear my voice, ye careless daughters, give ear unto my speech. Many days a year shall ye be troubled. And when is this going to take place? During Jacob's trouble, which Jacob's trouble involves the global economic collapse, which everybody in all nations is going to be affected, but mainly the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right. But also it deals with the persecution. Continuing on many days and years shall ye be troubled because we don't know how long Jacob's trouble is going to be. But we know it's going to be an ongoing time period leading up to the return of Yahweh Shai and the angels pursuing a Daniel 12 and 1. So it says for the vintage, meaning the government benefits. Right. For the vintage shall fail because this is a temporary society. It says, the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. So your status in this um, present world, in this present system, is not going to be here forever. The money you have, the great credit score you have, the, the proud, arrogant, haughty spirit that you women have, you're not going to have that forever. Because what you don't realize, the dollar is being devalued. These companies are closing down. You're going to need a man of the Lord. And for you women that don't have that, you will crack under pressure because when a woman is under constant stress, she will do anything, even if it involves humiliating herself. All right. You know, um, becoming a so-called sex worker or escort. All right. These women will crack under pressure and do things that they don't necessarily want to do. So if you a sister that has a man of the Lord, you need to cherish and respect your man even more. All right. Because you are blessed to be with a man of the Lord that has this knowledge that's going to have not only himself, but you stable in the times to come. Pursuant to Isaiah 33 and 6. Right. Tremble ye women that are at ease. So for you proud women. All right, you shameless woman, you feel like you don't need no man, you independent, you feel sovereign, your credit score is amazing, you got your nice, luxurious car, all right? You want to play the field, you want to dress in your harlot apparels, all right? The Lord is saying what? Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Because this lifestyle you living of whoredom and being a feminist is not going to be around forever, all right? It says, be troubled, ye careless ones. Because a lot of you women are careless. Oh, it's my body, my choice. I can sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. And then get an abortion pill or, or make this guy get an abortion. Then you got women that are so backwards in the mind that she'll get pregnant by another man and have a sincere man raise up another man child and then put the, the guy on child support. It's, it's, this society is, is messed up, man. This is why the most high, he's going to destroy this place. Continuing on, it says, be trouble, you careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. So these women are getting ready to lose everything in this global economic collapse that's taking place. It's only going to get worse. All right. Let's continue on. Isaiah 30 and verse... Two, 
I started one. It says, woe to the rebellious children. The rebellious children is talking about unbelieving Israelites because salvation is strictly only for the nation of Israel. All right. The elect of the nation of Israel strictly. It says, woe, meaning death and destruction to the rebellious children, save the Lord. Take that take counsel, but not of me. And that's what these women and that's what wicked Israelites are doing. When you consent to these false philosophies, false uh, religions, ideologies, feminism, right? The, the wisdom of this world. That's not the counsel of the Lord. So the Lord is saying what? Woe to the rebellious children, save the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. What's the counsel of the Lord? His prophets that's here to reprove our people and tell them to repent because the doors of mercy are closing. Jacob's trouble is getting ready to come. The hour of temptation is fastly approaching. It says, and that cover with a covering, right? These false philosophies, these false religions, these false ideologies, feminism, right? All this propaganda that the Edomites, the so-called white man in the sea line, portray through the media, through the music, through the movies, all over the place, billboards, right? It says, but not of my spirit. The Lord ain't tell you to be no damn feminist, all right? The Lord didn't tell you to sleep around multiple men. But what the Lord did say in Deuteronomy is that there shall be no whore or sodomite amongst the sons and daughters of Israel, you know? But then you got wicked Israelites that's uplifting the agendas of the so-called white man to destroy our people, all right? It says, but not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin. And that's what you Christians do. You add sin to sin. Oh, it's not what goes in, it's what comes out. I'm under grace. You, then you'll eat a bacon, egg, and cheese, or a pork chop. No, nah, it don't work like that, all right? That walk to go down into Egypt, pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8, Babylon the Great is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, all right? And what was Sodom and Egypt known for? Sodomy, all right? And even in Egypt, you had feminism there when you do your research. You had protesting going on. The same stuff you see going on in modern society, a lot of these things was taking place in Egypt, all right? Do your research on it. It says that walk to go down into Egypt and have not acts at my mouth, Luke 1 and 70, the prophets. It says to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. And that's what you women do. You strengthen yourself in this system that's meant to oppress our people. Then you oppress the men of your nation using this system with child support, alimony, so forth and so on. Right? It's completely unfair being under this system, under the so-called white man. But we understand why it's taking place. It's prophecy. And this is not a forever condition our people is going to be in. Once Yahweh Shah returns and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh. So the modern day Pharaoh is who? The so-called white man, because this is the new Egypt. This is the spiritual Egypt. This is the place of our bondage and our captivity. Right. It says, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh. Right. His system. Right. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be ashamed. So when this global economic collapse takes place. All right, you women, you will have nobody to blame but yourselves because a lot of you women, you don't want to take accountability for your actions. So since you feel like you don't need no man, all right, you want to be in your 30s, not be a mom, you want to sleep around, you want to be a whore, right? You pretty much want to imitate the power that a man has. You're going to be destroyed. When this dollar and this system goes down, you're going down with it. Thus saith the Lord. That's why the Lord said this, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. It's your shame because this is the, the life you chose. These are the choices you made to deny Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. And I'm talking about the Israelite woman, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indian woman. All right? Because y'all the biggest whores on the planet Earth for the ones that it applies to. It's ridiculous. It says, in the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. So that's what's going to take place. Now, let's end it with this. This is Micah chapter 7 and verse 10. It says, then she that is my enemy. A lot of these women, especially these so-called sisters, they are our enemies. All right. They want to challenge you on a doctrine and the, the gospel. You got women on YouTube 
making public videos completely out of order. And they know what the scriptures say, but they still embrace this ideology and mindset of being a feminist. Even in the truth, it's like that. All right. So for you brothers that's in the truth, and I'm a, I'm a young brother myself, you know, I still have a lot to learn. But for you brothers that's in the truth, just because a woman say she an Israelite sister, don't look, don't. That's nothing special. All right. That's not nothing special. It says, then she that is my enemy shall see it. See what? These prophecies, Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation, everything we've been prophesying over the decades, right? Shall see it and shame shall cover her. Why shall um, shame cover her? Because she didn't want to be under the authority of our men. She didn't want to be a pillar of rest for our man. She didn't want to have her desire unto her husband. Her desire was unto her job and her boss, right? It says... Shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is Yahweh thy God? My eyes shall behold her, now shall she be trodden down as the Maya in the street. So judgment is coming for you, wicked woman. And like I said, not all sisters is bad. This video applies to whoever it applies to. If you get offended, that's your problem. And more than likely, this video fits you. So Lord willing, you was edified by this lesson. Shalom.